Welcome to Church Online. We're so glad that you're with us today. We've got an awesome service plan for you, but we're now going into worship if you'd like to sing along. to the wild and don't be afraid run into wide open spaces grace is waiting for you dance like the weight has been lifted grace is waiting where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom there is freedom the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom there is freedom come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love for the spirit is here let there be freedom let there be Spaces, grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. When the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. When the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Come out of the dark. To the fullness of His love, for the Spirit is here. Let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Oh yes, let there be freedom. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. It's free, is free indeed, yes he is. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name. Come on, we sing. Chains will fall, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole. As I reflect, I 
different perspective They're in the best and worst days of this life You were always on my side You're in the pain, you're in the promise And on the days the furnace finds my fame You're the fourth within the flame I don't need to know what the future says Cause if the past could talk it would tell me this My God isn't finished yet If he did it before he could do it again I trust him in what comes next For the God I know is known for faithfulness Yeah, my hindsight says I can trust him
Jesus for our Savior is it to worship our God together? I want to give you a warm welcome to Church Online today. If it's your first time with us, it is so good to have you here today. In Galatians 5 verse 1, the Apostle Paul writes, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And I don't know what you're going through at the moment, but I want to tell you this. That in Jesus, there's freedom. Over this last week, of course, we've celebrated Easter. And what Jesus did on the cross was to bring you into a new level of freedom. John 10.10 says that I have come that you might have life and life to the fullness. And how can you have life to the fullness if you aren't free? The work that Jesus did on the cross when he died and rose again, conquered death, conquered sin, conquered the grave. It was so that you could live free. I believe for you today, there is liberation here at Church Online. There is freedom over your situation and over your circumstance. There is a new day where you can walk in to a wide open space with God. If that word's for you today, say, Josh, I need to be free. I need freedom. I'm going to pray for you right now. So God, we celebrate you for your freedom. We thank you that it is for freedom that you have set us free. Father, where people feel bound today, where they're bound in their minds, where they're bound in their bodies, where they're bound by situations and circumstances and fear, whatever it may be, Father, that all has to bow to you. You bore our freedom on the cross and it is for freedom that you have set us free. So I declare freedom over Arena Church online today. Freedom in households, freedom in situations and circumstances. Father, so that we could walk and that we could run into our life and destiny with you unfettered. We love you and we honour you, Lord. Amen. Hey, 
I believe that you're going to walk in God's freedom this week. Thank you, Josh, for that great encouragement. We've got loads of exciting things happening here at Arena. On the 15th of April at 7 p.m. over Zoom, we have our online Bible school night. You don't want to miss it. On the 18th of April, we have our Highlight Sunday. This is going to be an awesome day and you can get booked in to one of our campuses or you can join us online too. On the 20th of April, we have our first Tuesday and that's with special guest speaker David Sherman. It's going to be an awesome, awesome night and you can get invited to that. It will be happening at 7pm over Zoom. On the 25th, we have our Vision Sunday and again, you can come to one of our live campuses or it will be happening online. This is going to be such a great day. You don't want to miss it. On the 29th, we have our leadership track and that will be happening online over Zoom at 7 p.m. There's a connect card if you're new and you've recently found us, that's a great place to start. But there's also a prayer request section. If you've got a need, one of the team at Arena would love to be praying for you. There's lots of ways that you can give and they're all found on the website. But we're now going into our Minute Mingle and then after that we'll be hearing from our campus pastor from Toulouse, Patrick. Arena Church. It's a real pleasure to be with you this morning. I'm Patrick, campus pastor in Arena, Toulouse, in the southwest of France. Are you ready for the Word of God? I know that you love the teaching, you, are, you love to study the Word, so I hope you are ready. I'm looking forward to deliver the teaching, the message that God has put into my heart. Okay, let's go. Let's go together. Don't hesitate to fill the chat. Amen. You know, we are living in a strange society. We are uh, 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 surrounded by social media. You know, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and so on. You know, we have a lot of social media today. 20 years ago, we didn't have any single thing of, of, about it. But today, we need to cope. Uh, with that. And you know, I'm on Instagram and, 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 uh, and I walk on the street as well and I can see so many young people you know, taking, taking pictures, taking photos, you know, but they are taking so many pictures, so many photos before to post just one. You know, they are looking for the, the best angle, you know, they are looking for the, the best profile, you know, they, they start to cover the, the scars or, or, or to hide, you know, the defect, you know, because they want to put on the Facebook, on Instagram, the best picture ever. But I want to tell you a secret, and I'm sure that many know this secret. How many know that the picture that you post on Instagram is not the first picture that you take? <laughs> Maybe it's the 52 or the 53rd picture that you took, and you post just one on Instagram. You post the best, the best angle, the best profile, my goodness, you know? You know, because you want... You know, to remove all the defects and the scars. This is the truth, you know. The, you know, this is why my, my bro tell me always, Patrick, be careful because social media is not real. You know, social media, many of this is fake. Many of this. <laughs> Maybe you, you know this kind of, of situation, of, 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 of story. Uh, you know, today we, we, can, we, can have a, we can encounter our girlfriend or boyfriend uh, online, on internet. You know, there's always many websites, cool or not so cool. 
you know. But we, we, there was plenty of, of ways to meet uh, our boyfriend or girlfriend or to have a date uh, first uh, on, so on online and after we, we encounter each other face to face. And you know, we have so many stories uh, about people that they encounter face to face, they encounter each other face to face, and, and, and one of the two said, oh my goodness, you know, uh, when I, I, I see you, you know, your photo was like this, but in real, you are, you are like this. In fact, you, it's a fake, you know, you're, you're, it's not real, it's not, the, you're, it's not you, because I, didn't, I couldn't recognize you. First of all, and second of all, my goodness, I'm sorry, but you are you're worse in real than in the picture. <laughs> that, it, it, it's happened every day, every day. And sometimes we cannot recognize people from a photo in comparison in real. This is the truth. This is the truth. But in the Bible, let's come back to the Bible, you know? After the resurrection, many people didn't recognize Jesus. Many people, you know. You know, for first example, you know, uh, the third day, you know, Mary came, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. <clears throat> and she wanted to, 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 to see the, the dead body of Jesus. But the, the, the stone was rolled away, Jesus was resurrected, and she was looking for Jesus. And she, 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 she was speaking with Jesus, and Jesus was speaking to her. But she didn't recognize Jesus. She said she was, he was the gardener. <laughs> you know, the same day, you know, Jesus walked away uh, with two disciples, you know, to reach em the city of Emmaus. You know, we, we say in the Bible, the Emmaus disciple. And Jesus spoke with them, you know, walked with them. But they couldn't recognize Jesus. You know, even the disciple, you know, the ten disciples, because Judah wasn't there, he was dead, and Thomas wasn't there as well. We don't know why. And the disciple couldn't recognize Jesus until Jesus saw his hand and his side. So they recognized Jesus through his cars. My goodness. How many people didn't recognize Jesus? Many, you know. And Thomas and the disciples said to Thomas that we saw the, 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 the Messiah. We saw Jesus. The Savior is resurrected. He is risen. He is alive. He's amazing. And Thomas says something fabulous that you know and I know because this verse is a well-known verse. Thomas said, unless I put my finger in the hole of his hand, and in the all of his side, I would not believe. I would not believe. Wow. And what is amazing, you know, in John 20, the Bible says, it's not me saying it's the Bible. In John 20, the Bible says, the eight days, you know, eight days after the resurrection, you know, eight days after Easter, eight days by the way, I run a church. Uh, which date we are today? <laughs> yes, we are eight days after Easter. We are eight days after resurrection. So, in the Bible, John 20, eight days after the resurrection, you know, Thomas was there with the disciple in the house, you know, and Jesus came again, appeared again to them, but not Thomas included. And you know, and when Thomas, you know, and Jesus met together, you know, Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, come. And we will read that, you know, in John 20, verse 27. You know, and he said, Thomas, Thomas, come. Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Woo! John 20 verse 27. Eight days after Easter. And Thomas said, oh my, he was a bit ashamed. You know, he was, oh my Lord, it's you. Oh, oh, oh my God. Yes, he start to believe. My goodness, can I tell you something? Because he saw the scars of Jesus, he started 
to believe. Can I tell you something? Can I encourage you, Irona Church? You know, your scars are not defect. Your scars are perfect because they make you as the image of God. So, my encouragement today is, and it is the title of my message, be proud of your scars. Be proud of your scars. The first point that I see here is your scars is almighty. Your scars are almighty. You know, Jesus here has a, a, a resurrected body. Let's, let's do a bit of, of, of theology, okay? Let's do a bit of theology. You need to understand that Jesus has a resurrected body. And in the Bible, the Bible says that when Jesus would coming back at the second return of Jesus, you know, for those who are alive, they will be wrapped up with him. And they will have a, 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 a new body, a brand new body. And we will live in a, in a new Jerusalem, in a new city. And, you know, for the dead people, they will, they will resurrect from the dead. And they will have a new body, a brand new body as well. The Bible says no scars anymore, no sickness anymore, no, uh, no, no suffering anymore, nothing. It, it will be brand new body. And, to, and here in, in this passage, you know, in the Bible, we can see that Jesus has a, a resurrected body. And they couldn't recognize him because of that. You know, in, in Mark 16 verse 12, the Bible says that the body of Jesus change form. They couldn't recognize him because his body changed form. But, you know, I, I, I want to ask you a question, Arena. You know, why Jesus kept the scars of the worst moment of his life? Whereas he has a resurrected body. Whereas normally, whereas normally, the scars shouldn't be there anymore. But why he kept the scars. Harina, that is becoming interesting. You know, I want to tell you something that the evidence of your pain is the evidence of his power. The evidence of his pain is the evidence of his power. Power, hallelujah. You know, uh, I explain myself. You know, uh, I'm sure that, uh, you, I want to ask you a question. How many dead people has wounded or has been wounded? You know, maybe all of them. Okay. Uh, how many dead people has scars? Maybe you will reply me, maybe all of them. Okay. But now I, I, I ask you the, the last question, you know. How many, dead, how many dead people are there today or alive today to tell the story of their scars or of their wounded, you know? And you said, Patrick, nobody because they are dead. Of course, because our Jesus is risen. Our Jesus is resurrected from the dead. Our Jesus is alive and he's still there to tell the story of his scars. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, the evidence of his pain is the evidence of his power. And I want to tell you something. Maybe you have, you have experienced before a big car accident and, 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 and you spent so many time in hospital. Maybe you, you had surgery and today you have some scars on your leg or maybe some scars even on your face. But you can say that to, to somebody, no, these scars are not a defect. These scars, you know, is the evidence of my pain is the evidence of the power of Jesus Christ in my life because he rescued me, because he saved me, because he was there for me, because he was in the car with me. Hmm. The evidence of your pain is the evidence of his power. Whew. You know, Maybe you, you, you have a tattoo. And this tattoo, you know, means that you, you, you belong to a, a, a crew, a gang. That maybe you, you went to prison. Maybe you, you killed somebody. Maybe you were, maybe you, you were not a, a good person before. 
but this start to speak today that God give you freedom, that God, you know, transform you, that you're not the same person, but you, 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 you keep the statue. This is the evidence of your pain, but as well, this is the evidence of the power of God because you're not this person. Even if you, the tattoo is still there, your heart has changed. Woo. Be proud of your scars. Be proud of your scars. Because I want to tell you that your scars, this is my second point, your scars tell a story. You know, the scars in your leg may be ugly. Maybe the, the, the scars maybe on your belly may be ugly. The scars on your face may be ugly. But I want to tell you, you can write down on, the, on your notebook that the, 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 the sentence, you know. I want to tell you, Aruna Church, that, that your scars may be ugly, but they, they tell a story that God wants to use for his ministry. Whew. Your scars may be ugly, but they tell a story that God wants to use for his glory. Whew. Yes. Your scars carry ministry. You need to understand that, Arena Church. It's so powerful. You know, in John 20, verse 20, when the disciple, you know, saw, saw Jesus, at the beginning, they, they, they couldn't recognize him. But as soon as Jesus saw, saw his hand and his side, they, they, they recognize the Savior. They recognize the, the Messiah. They recognize their friend, Jesus. And the Bible says that as soon as they show the scars, the Bible says, John 20, verse 20, the disciples were overjoyed. The disciples were overjoyed. Wow. Arena, can I ask you a question? How can we find joy into our scars? Ooh. How can we find joy into our scars? You know, paradoxically, in this text, John 20, verse 20, paradoxically, you know, what can hurt your body can feed the hope of somebody. <laughs> I continue. What can harm your body can give life to somebody. Yes, this is the truth, Arena. I, I, I need to give you, I need to give you illustration. I need to give you example, you know, because I need to explain myself. You know, uh, when, when my wife was pregnant, you know, uh, uh, you know, we spent nine months, of course, because pregnancy is nine months, of course, okay? And after nine months, you know, we went to the hospital. We went to the hospital, and to be fair with you, we spent two days in the hospital because, because it, it was too long to deliver this baby, you know. So this baby didn't want to go away, didn't want to go out, you know. My baby Paul. <laughs> and, and, you know, and after a while, after two days, the surgeon, the, surgeon, the surgeon came into the room and he said, Patrick, Lucille, I'm sorry, but because it's too long, the waiting time to deliver the baby is too long. We need to do a cesarean. Hmm. A cesarean. And Lucy knew on the bed, she, she was so sad. You know why? Because she wanted to, to, uh, she, she wanted to deliver the baby in a natural way. And she knew that a cesarean will leave a scars on her belly. So she was, she was a bit sad. You know, and after a while, we, we did the, the cesarean, the, the, the baby got out 
and we were so happy, you know. And then we come back, we, we came back home, and 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 he start he start to grow. He, he he's healthy, he's fantastic, he's amazing. We love him. And Lucy, you know, Paul is the sunshine of Lucy, you know. So today, uh, you know, he he he, he had uh, he turned nine months just one week ago. So you know, nine months in and nine months. Out, I said the joke, you know. So it just to say that everything is good. And and today Lucille can can tell me, Patrick, can I tell you something? Yeah, sure. She can tell me, you know. Even if my my, my scars is ugly, <laughs> you know where I'm going. You know where I'm going. Even even if my scars is ugly, if, if, even if it can hurt. My body. I know that can give life to somebody. So good. So good. You know, I would like to to come with you in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 and 4. Let's read together. Praise be to the God of, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our troubles so that we can, com we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Let's go together. You know, at Easter, Jesus showed his wounds. He was bleeding at the cross. But after Easter, Jesus showed his scars. Whew. You know, and as a church, we are a bunch of scars people. And it's time, guys, it's time to show our scars in other people and believers to be healed, in order to a Christian, in order to to unbeliever, to believe in Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Let's come back to Thomas. You know, Thomas asked God, unless I put my finger into the hole of his hand, unless. God, show me that he exists. Unless God answer my prayer. Unless God remove this circumstance. Unless God heal this situation. Unless, unless, unless. I will not believe. I will not believe. I will not believe. Can I ask you a question? I read at church. How many times God answer your prayer? How many times God removed this situation, this trouble from you? How many times God was there in a fire, you know, you know, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a fire pit with you? How many, how many times God, you know, comfort to counsel you, you know, through your, your, your tough situation? How many times God show you his scars? His scars. How many times God answer what you ask? How many times God answer what you ask? More than you can imagine. More than you can expect. Beyond your expectation. How many times? But now, and what if it was your turn? Hmm. And now, what if it is you now? But Patrick, what, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? What, what, what if what? And, and what if now it was your turn to show your scars? And what if now it, it was your turn to comfort others? And what if now, because you have, you have divorced, 
and you know that God comforts you through this situation. And what if now it, it was your turn to show your scars to, to another woman or to another guy to say, you know, if God comfort me, me, I will be with you. I will pray with you. I will pray for you that God can comfort you as well. I will tell you my story because I have some scars and my scar tells the story that God was there for me. Because, you know, you know I, I was in depression. And I, and I know that it was a tough situation. But God healed me uh, through this depression. But I know you, that you were in depression, you know, as, as I was before. But I can tell you my story. Because if he has done for me, he can do for you. So I will be with you. I will be for you. I will pray for you. I will surround you with my arm, with my love, with my prayer. Because it's time to show my scars. God shows his, so I need to show mine. You know, I was, because maybe somebody said that he was in the drug addicts, or he was smoking, and, and he has some scars in the teeth, you know. His teeth or, or, or not as before because of that. But he said, no, no. That is not a defect. That is perfect because that tells a story that God, Jesus, uh, give me freedom. Jesus, heal me. The Holy Spirit, you know, you know, remove this addiction from me. And if He has done for me, He can do for you. So me, I want. I, I, I have been comforted by Jesus. So now I need to comfort you. I need to show my scar to you. I need to tell the story to you that if it, even my scars may be ugly, I know it can tell the story to God he will use for his glory. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is my turn. So I, I want to encourage you, Arena Church, don't... So it's time to, 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 to remove the mask. It's time to, to take off the cover. It's time, it's, it's time to, to delete the patch. Don't hide your scars. Don't hide yourself, please. I want to, 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 to encourage you, you know. To, uh, if you have a tattoo from your past, please don't remove it. You know, don't remove it. Don't go to hospital to do laser. Don't remove it. Because that is a sign that Jesus transformed your body. You're not this person anymore and you have a proof. To tell to people, who please, I beg you, I will not trust, I beg you, maybe somebody, somebody else, I beg you, don't, don't do plastic surgery. You may, you, you, for, you may not love your, your, your noise or your face or, or a part of your body, but I, I, please, I beg you that leave your body like this because your scars will be a proof that the, uh, for God's power, your scars will be a proof for the healing of somebody else. And I will finish with that. You know, maybe some of, some of you are, are still bleeding. You know, there, there is a difference between wounds and scars. You know, scars means two things. That you have been wounded and you have been healed. When you touch your scars, you don't have pain anymore. But wounds means that you are still bleeding. But I, I ask you my, my last question. You know, what God can heal what can God heal if it's not revealed? You know, nobody, nobody of us, nobody of us go to the doctor without revealing where he suffer, without revealing the suffering. You know why? Because the doctor cannot heal you, cannot care of you if you don't reveal where you are suffer. So with God, it's the same thing, you know. It's time to tell to Jesus where you are bleeding in this way he will, he will bring healing. God bless you, Arena. Amen. Amen. Crucify for love and pierce for you. What a message that was from our Arena Toulouse campus pastor. Patrick did such a good job. Come on, show up in the chat. Let him know how good it was. We're at the part of our service now where we give back 
to God of what he's given us. In Micah, it says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. And we believe here in the Arena Church in the principle of tithing, the principle of giving to God from what he's given us. I don't know what you believe, but I believe that God can do more with 90% than I can do with 100%. And here at Arena, we are a generous church. I want you to know that your giving is literally changing lives as we're able to feed people and house vulnerable people and help people along their journey in this life. I want to thank you for all you are doing, Arena Church. Now, before we finish today, come on, let's worship God again. Let's sing in our homes. It's been so good to have you with us. Of the goodness of God 